Hey Yaga Ho guys for what I guess is the most anticipated match of the week. This is week three of the GBA season four. We got the one and one plus five Utah Jasmine going up against the Winnipeg Aqua Jets who are two and oh at plus eight. Last week we had a little stumble against the Detroit Steel Wings falling one oh and meanwhile Hank of the Winnipeg Aqua Jets uh, kind of completely crushed Steve Magnitude's dreams with Mega Pinsir putting up six KOs after a Swords Dance and a botched Calc. So that kind of led into this being possibly the most I prepared for a GBA game, at least in terms of the number of sets that I've gone through and in you know the number of uh, Pokemon on the roster that I've considered bringing, which I believe I actually consider bringing at one point or another all eleven guys. Yes, even Venomoth. Because for 10 seconds, thereabouts, I forgot that Mega Pinsir Quick Attack existed, and then I remembered, and then Venomoth was back on the bench. So, uh, But at some point or another, everyone was given consideration for the roster. Uh, like Lucario, you know, he's been doing pretty well for us with uh, extreme speed and whatnot. Um, unfortunately, um, the Tornadus T is just a little bit too bulky, you know, especially with Regenerator. Um, and notably, like Mega Pinsir, which would be nice to out prioritize that Quick Attack. Um, you know, it's, it does actually have base 120 defense, so it just, it wasn't doing enough. I kind of looked at it, I was like, alright, if Luke gets a Swords Dance, how well does he do? And he just did not do well enough for me to really want to bring him this week over some other stuff. Um, Vaporeon, it would be nice to have, you know, a physical wall, uh, who is not weak to rock. Um, you know, something that could, you know, take on Excadrill pretty well, because I was pretty not happy about Excadrill. Uh, but ultimately, um, I decided to cut that as well. You know, wish support would have been nice. Heal bells, extra heal bell support would have been nice. Uh, Dusk Noir, you know, also very uh, resilient doing stuff. Uh, Shadow Sneak onto, uh, you know, potentially Scarf Latias because of later reasons um, would have been nice. Uh, Willow Wisping things would also be grand. And um, yeah, uh, the other one was Togekiss, which uh, actually I'm going to go ahead and pop up. Uh, this right here, you're going to see that we do not have uh, his team shown. I'm going to do something a little bit different this week. Uh, I'm going to show my team first and then uh, pull in his team after I've addressed like things that I was concerned with. But uh, yeah, Togekiss was actually on the team for a very long time. Uh, kind of the overall goal was to paralyze as much stuff as I could and then air slash flinch hacks everything to death. Um, but I got very disappointed at the amount of damage Amoongus with Assault Vest took from a super effective stab air slash off like 125 base special attack. It's pathetic. It's stupid. <sighs> so I was very displeased. And so I ended up putting Togekiss off the team. So here's the team that we did bring. And first off, you see there we have Starmie. Uh, I know I want Rapid Spin because uh, if I get rocks up, I definitely want to keep them up. And uh, we got three attacks on this Starmie. Those attacks are going to end up being Scald, Ice Beam, and Psy Shock. I had Shadow Ball in there at one point. Um, just to hit a couple of things, but I decided, you know what, um, Psyshock is going to be well better uh, against an Assault Vest Amoongus. It's probably going to hit Miss Magius harder than Shadow Ball would anyway because of the differences of defenses and stab and whatnot. And yeah, just Shadow Ball got kicked off, even though it would have been kind of cool. Um, and then Ice Beam was still there because it needed something to hit Latias with. And Scald, of course, because Stab, because Infernape, because Excadrill, so... And leftovers because I hate kicking myself for 10% when I rapid spin with life orbs. So last week we did not bring Zapdos. This week we are. So that's a uh, improvement. Uh, we're gonna run be running Discharge this week uh, because the theme of get everything paralyzed uh, is definitely still something I want to do. Uh, we are still gonna pack Volt Switch. Excadrill is there, but I do also have Heat Wave. So if it wants to get too cheeky switching in, uh, maybe we can predict that and nail it with a Heat Wave. Uh, it can take one, but it probably can't take two unless maybe it's Assault Vest and Super Specially Defensive, uh, which at that point I'll be considerably less worried about it. Uh, we do actually have, I believe, the most defensive Zapdos I've ran. You'll see the HP is actually fully invested, which I rarely have, but uh, it is a fully defensive Zapdos because I want to take Mega Pinsir hits. Uh, those were kind of the two MOs this week, were do not get swept and break through the Regenerator core. So, you know, get... Containing Mega Pinsir kind of starts with Zapdos. Uh, Blissey was actually a relatively late addition to the team. Uh, we're going to be running max defense this week. Uh, bold, everything, you know. Biggest defense we can get because I want to be able to take 
as much physical damage as Bliss can take and uh, <clears throat> be able to Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave everything. As much stuff as we can get paralyzed is going to be better. This is actually, believe it or not, uh, of all the times I've used Blissey, this is the first time I have ever used Seismic Toss on Blissey and put her special attack stat to waste. Uh, I've used Estos on Chansey, you know, several times in the previous seasons, but uh, this is actually the first time I've used it on Bliss. So, uh, the other main reason I wanted Bliss on the team was because I really needed Stealth Rock, and I felt like it was, you know, I have to bring either Blissey or Agron, and at one point I actually did kind of toy with the idea of bringing a specially defensive Aggron um, to sort of be a Blissey replacement, which is kind of funny. But uh, I decided, nah, let me just go ahead and go with the real thing and just go with Bliss. So Bliss is going to be our stealth rocker. Uh, we have Whimsicott here who is going to be packing Moonblast because generally when I see a Lati, I tend to want to run Life Orb Whimsicott because that does pretty well against those things. Um, however, there is, of course, the problem of Amoongus, so we got a couple of moves on there to enable Whimsicott to not be a completely free Amoongus switch, and we got to punish that thing somehow. Uh, then we got a nice little back pocket ace in the hole move on Whimsicott that might come in handy to try to win me the game if something is, you know, if something's br broken down and we need something to happen good for us. Uh, so Agron is coming back again because, you know, I figured, eh. Out of the or out of conference game, you know, we can kind of afford to have a little bit of fun with this. So why not bring Agron? And uh, that Agron is actually the thing that ended up replacing Togekiss because, as I mentioned, I got kind of frustrated with uh, Togekiss being incapable of doing mad damage to Amoongus despite having stab super effective moves against it. Um, and Agron's here, like, hey, I'm just gonna, I can probably like one shot the thing. So it's like, okay, let's just bring Agron instead. Now the problem is that Agron does not outspeed much of anything on his team except for. Uh, well, it'll we'll outspeed the, the Regenerator Core if he doesn't run speed on Alamomola. Um, it could potentially outspeed Magneton as well, I think. Um, and I believe I actually made it outspeed a min speed Gardevoir. So. But uh, otherwise, it's just the boss god. Uh, one move changed from last week, uh, which is something I should have had on there that I didn't, and I don't know why I didn't know that he learned this move, but apparently he does. So uh, this, is, this is Agron. He's coming in this week. He is the boss god, don't question it. I know you guys don't have to question it. he's the boss god. So Charizard's coming again, Charizard running DD again. Charizard has not done anything this season, so good grief. But anyway, he's coming again, maybe he'll do something this week. Um, he has enough speed EVs to outspeed a Jolly Excadrill, which unfortunately also forces him to run Jolly. Um, and he also has the you know max attack and the rest in HP. It's actually a pretty chunky amount in HP. Uh, it amounts to, I think, 84 HP, thereabout, uh, because Hank does have quite a bit of good priority. He's got um, uh, Iron Fist Mock Punch on 8th. He's got, of course, Mega Pinsir, Aerial 8 Quick Attack, uh, Sharpedo Aqua Jet, I suppose, Latias Sucker Punch as well. Um, and I really felt like this would be the thing that might make him, uh, well, run Scarf Latias, and because of that, until I confirm... It is not Scarf Latias, or if it is Scarf Latias, then until that's dead, I know it's going to be pretty pointless to uh, start setting up with Zard because otherwise Scarf Draco Meteor and it's gone. So that's what I'm bringing, and uh, let's see what he wants to bring. I'm probably least looking forward to taking on Excadrill, and uh, we can see here he does not have it, so I'm very pleased with that. We got Infernape, Mega Pinsir, Amoongus, Latias, Tornadus T, and the Curveball. Magneton coming in. So this is the first week I think he's not brought the Regenerator Core. Uh, and see so we got a Magneton here. So I'm going to assume off the top of my head it's going to be Choice Scarf uh, just because that's the way I generally run it. And uh, I'm also going to assume it's going to be Timid because that's the only way it can outspeed uh, guaranteedly anyway. Um, Starmie and Whimsicott, both of which it has a super effective stab to. So I'm just going to assume that's what it's going to be coming out of the gates, but uh, since I see no Excadrill, I'm going to be a lot more free to Volt Switch, a lot more free to Thunder Wave, and uh, that is going to lead us into a Zapdos lead, so let's get underway. So with a Zapdos lead, Latias is probably the thing I want to see the least, since that'll force me right into Bliss, but thankfully it's going to be a Magneton instead. A Magneton with a fantastic nickname, by the way. Look at that, yeah, pointing it out. Good stuff. Thumbs up, Hank. Uh, anyway, uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to assume it's going to be Scarf, so I'm just going to Volt Switch here myself. And I uh, hope we can open up kind of like we did in week one with a slower Volt Switch. However, he ends up to be slower, which means he is obviously not Scarfed. Uh, so I'm just going to have to drop in Blissey here, which kind of sucks because he's probably going to Volt Switch as well. 
and that's going to give him free momentum into Infernape. So Bliss is going to come in, and Volt Switch is going to come in, and I can see from that amount of damage that it looks like it's not Specs. We know it's not Scarfed, which probably means it's Eviolite, but it did a little bit more damage than it should have, so I'm going to assume that's just the analytic boost coming in, which makes sense since a slow Magneton um, is, doesn't really have much reason to try to Magnet pull in Lucario. Or an Agron, I guess. So, um, anyway, so Ape does indeed drop in. I would love to call his bluff that he's just going to go Rocks and T-Wave it, but it's just too early. I don't have Rocks up on my own. I need Bliss to set up Rocks, if nothing else, to, you know, because Rocks are good. Uh, he doesn't have Excadrill hanging around. Uh, he could have Defog on Latias. If it wants to be a bulky Defog Latias, that's cool, because um, that means it's not a Scarf Latias, although Steve ran Scarf Latios with Defog last week, so... Uh, but anyway, I'm not going to stay in here, and I think I'm just going to get out to the quintessential Infernape counter from 4th Gen, which will be Starmie, as it uh, resists both stabs, it has super effective stabs on both sides, and as he goes for Stealth Rock, of course, also has Rapid Spin. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's probably a Sashed Infernape, because he has been t favoring that uh, a little bit these past couple of weeks. Coincidentally, my favorite Infernape uh, item from 4th Gen was uh, Focus Sash. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to, I think, rapid spin first. It'd be nice to, you know, force it out, get a nice big analytic boost that hit off on somebody. But I don't want something to come in that I have to switch out on and, you know, not get the spin off. So we're just going to spin first and just immediately undo that. And uh, Magneton comes back in and we get rid of rocks. So it kind of stinks because we're somewhat back in the same situation we were the first turn, which is that, I'm gonna have to sw which is that I will be switching out of Magneton uh, into Bliss. It's going to let him go right back into Ape and you know, on Bliss, and that's not very good, but, you know, other moves could potentially be made, uh, maybe I T-Wave if he's, as he sets up Rocks again instead, uh, maybe I, you know, he goes for close combat as I go into Starmie, and then I get to fire off, uh, you know, a nice Scald or something at somebody, you know, different things could happen, so it's not a perfect, uh, loop that's just losing me ground at any rate, um, you know, we got a little bit of information about the Magneton, so, and a little bit about the Infernape as well, maybe, uh, at least if it's, well, Maybe a little bit. Anyway, so he's gonna volt switch out here as we go into Bliss, and he goes into a bird that could have could have heat wave, I guess, but it's not actually a talent flame. Um, and because I've taken two volt switches, it's you know it's not significant damage, but it's enough damage that I'm not gonna be happy about leaving Bliss in on a potential you know physically invested tornado T with uh, superpower. So I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I don't again. I don't have rock up, so I'm not gonna take any risk with Bliss until I do. So I figure if it's superpower, if it's flying stab, if it's whatever, I don't think there's too much that Tornado T uh, can do to Zapdos, at least not from full. His rocks are not up for him, so thanks to Starmie. So I'm pretty free to switch this in, and I actually just go straight for knockoff. So that's you know a good option. It's gonna hit Dose uh, and Bliss pretty well and get rid of their leftovers. So worked out. And now what I want to do here, because Bliss is still at reasonable hit points to where I'm pretty sure it could live. Uh, a hit from Latias, which you know would be uh, would, res yeah, would resist all moves that Zapdos has here. Uh, I feel pretty good about just going straight for a discharge and maybe try to get something paralyzed. So uh, Latias does indeed come in. It uh, does not get paralyzed. That's fine. You know, thirty percent is not going to happen every time, unlike the poor Azumarill from week one. So I'm just going to hard switch out here since Latias will of course outspeed. I uh, don't quite know what its item is yet, but uh, at least now we see that it is not leftovers. So. Uh, that definitely is ratcheting up Scarf, Latias, on the likelihood um, of things that he could be. So uh, we're going to switch out here momentarily after I run a couple Calyx to make sure Bliss is going to be okay uh, to take a Psy Shock. And looks like uh, looks like it takes it all right. So that means it's, most, it's not going to be Specs. And I believe the number I write down here is 114. Uh, you'll see momentarily here there will be a little light that comes on in the top right. Uh, somewhere around, yeah, there you go. So you can maybe see there's a little little flash there, discoloration on his name. Uh, that is me turning on the lamp in my room to use my calculator. So that was me calculating the 114 and writing it down. So uh, I know we'll be safe to live another one, and uh, I would like to get this thing paralyzed. So I'm going to toss out a T-Wave, and uh, in comes this thing to ne negate my T-Wave. So, oh well. Um, I'd like to get Bliss healed up. I would like to get Stealth Rock up more importantly though, and since this thing's now in here, yeah, it's gonna Volt Switch into whatever it wants. Yes, he blocked the T-Wave, but uh, he also kind of gave me free Stealth Rock right here because I'm not threatened immediately by this thing. Bliss has a free turn. If Bliss has a free turn, I'm setting up Stealth Rock, so that's what I do. And then he Volt Switches out. Uh, it would be nice, you know, to 
If we gotten a heal up there, if I had uh, boiled first or you know done whatever, but uh, oh well. So I expect Mega Pincers or somebody's gonna come in here, force me out with low HP, and then that's gonna be a bad series of events right there. Uh, you know, especially if Mega Pincers got sub, SD, etc. Uh, though I'm definitely gonna have to keep track of what sort of coverage moves Mega Pincer has because if it doesn't have certain things, certain things can wall up. But it doesn't matter anyway because he drops in Latias, and I'm not really sure why. Um, 153 right now. I'm taking 114, so that I'd imagine that's not you know within damage variation. I'm reasonably confident about that. So uh, I think right here I'm just gonna go ahead and boil up. Uh, last turn, I, at last turn I soft boiled first. Um, this turn I think I'm just going to uh, go ahead and take the hit points now, and uh, we'll see what he does. Um, I just want hit points back. Thinking about thinking about it for a while. Uh, I guess also there's the he could potentially be something like Lumberry, and that would make me very sad if I T-waved him and then, you know, Blitz died, so. Anyway, uh, I am just going to boil up, and uh, now that I'm at a little bit higher hit points to where I can maybe salvage something later on, you know, maybe come into a Moongus, for example, and get healed up, uh, which is definitely part of the plan, uh, now I feel a little bit safer about throwing out a T-Wave, so now I think that's what I'm going to do and see if we can get this thing paralyzed. And now he switches back into Magneton, so I'm just mistiming these Thunder Waves every bloody turn. Um, but once again, he has Magneton in on Bliss, and he's going to get Volt Switch Momentum, and he's dodging Thunder Waves, which I imagine he would very much like to do. Um, but he's also giving me free turns to get Blissey back up to full HP. Uh, once again, I didn't note, I didn't point it out before. Uh, we see that his Magneton is actually outslowing Bliss, uh, presumably so he can, um, you know, get a volt, slower Volt switch off so that something doesn't come into a T wave, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but that also means that Agron is going to be outspeeding it, which means that is one additional thing that is going to be capable of killing it, and it's taken a little bit of damage, of course, from that initial Volt switch. So its sturdy would be broken if, for some reason, it was sturdy. But I'm pretty sure it would be analytic based on the damage that it did. Uh, that it's been doing with these volt switches, so I don't imagine he's gonna go into uh, Latias again here, since Bliss is at even more HP, and it clearly wasn't working out for him. So I'm expecting either Mega Pinsir or perhaps uh, Tornadus to come back in here. Ends up to be Pinsir, and now because Bliss is at considerably more HP and has set up Stealth Rock, I feel a little bit more okay uh, about trying to set up with it and you know not letting him get away with the Swords Dance on the Switch. I'm still very afraid of sub and I think about this turn for a very long time because if I T-Wave and he sets up a sub we're gonna be in a world of hurt. Uh, I can potentially finagle my way out of it but I'm not going to enjoy it so I can you know maybe do something like S-Toss to break a sub. I could just go ahead and outright switch to Dose uh, but in the end I decided you know what I think I think I'm just gonna stay in. I think I'm just gonna T-Wave um, if he has close combat, I'm probably dead. I'll live a return, but I'll I'll die if he has close combat. Two seconds left on the clock. I go ahead and click T-Wave. So uh, what does he do? He just goes straight for knockoff, so he gets rid of my leftovers, but I will trade that for a Paralysis on Mega Pinsir. That is gigantic. Huge threat. is just completely neutralized now, as I don't think he has a Cleric on this team, um, from what I can recall. I think his only Clerics are Missy and Gardevoir. Yeah, that looks right. So he has neither of those, so I'm just going to go into Zapdos, get it on a free para. Uh, I don't know what move he went for there. I guess I'll have to watch his side to be sure. But, uh, you know, if it was close combat or return, well, they'll still hurt because it's still Mega Pinsir. But uh, either way, um, we're coming at pretty good HP, and uh, we're going to be able to threaten this thing out. If, if possible, I'd rather just go ahead and get the thing dead, so I'm just going to go straight for Discharge. Uh, it would be kind of tempting to go for Heat Wave, but uh, Heat Wave not having Stab would not kill. Uh, ends up that he went into a Moongus, so a Heat Wave would have been well better. Uh, but we did, however, get a nice little Paraproc on there, which, you know, Moongus is already super slow, so that's not the biggest deal in the world, but making it miss a move every now and then is going to be good, too. So, uh, for whatever reason, I hard switch. I don't know why I didn't Volt Switch, but I didn't, so that was a mistake. Um, but I I guess, regardless, you know, I probably wouldn't have done too much. But anyway, uh, so Medi comes in here, and... Medi gets poisons, which I'm very glad that it's not Zapdos because, of course, Medi's got a natural cure. Now, the way I want to try to get this thing dead is to use my Togekiss replacement, which is Agron. And, uh, you know, I, but I'm going to need a little bit of damage on there. We, of course, see that it uh, used Toxic and it has Black Sludge, so it's not going to be AV. So I need to get a little bit more damage on there just to kind of reassure myself that damage radiation is not going to screw Agron over. So I S toss, and uh, he reveals Giga Drain, which makes me a little bit leery because Agron coming into Sludge Bomb, fine. Agron coming into Giga Drain, 
not quite as fine, although I'll still live it, but it'll be not nearly as good. And uh, also, of course, it'll give him hit points back. So it's uh, a very dicey switch here, but in the end, I, I think I'm just going to go with it. I don't think Bliss can get me any more damage on there because I'm going to have to soft world up and then... You know, I'm going to have to S-toss him, and Toxic's just going to kick my butt too much. So this is the turn. Uh, i got to pull the trigger now. I'm going to go ahead and go into Aggron. Uh, if he Giga Drain's up, I believe I, there's a possibility I can kill it straight up from full. Uh, but I'm not super confident. I'm really hoping that Bliss has done enough damage to it. And uh, you know, he's going to get some Black Sludge recovery. So in comes Aggron, and he Sludge Bombs. So thankfully Aggron gets it for free. And generally when Aggron gets in for free, he's going to have a good time. Let's take a look. Now, if that does not get you excited, you are not a Utah Jasmine fan. So, Agron putting up the first KO of the match probably should have had some Volt Switch help from Zapdos there, but, you know, that was a bad coaching mistake, and good players make up for coaching mistakes. So, that's exactly what Agron does. And I was hoping also, based on the amount of damage that Discharge did, that it looked like it was going to be more specially defensive than physically defensive, so Agron would be pretty safe to knock it out. And it uh, looks like that was indeed the case. Anyway, so he drops in Magneton here, which is very weird to me, because I already know Blissey outspeeds it, therefore I already know that Agron outspeeds it. So I'm searching for a reason, you know, could he have something up his sleeve? Why has he dropped this in? Any reason not to click Earthquake? And then that aside, no, there's not a reason not to click Earthquake. So, therefore, I click Earthquake, and therefore, Magneton dies. So, it was actually a interesting little spread he had on his speed, to where he would outspeed an uninvested base 50, that is Agron, uh, but would outslow a uninvested base 55, that is to say Blissey, so he can get those slower bolt switches off and not come into T-Wave. Very cool, but unfortunately very ineffective against max speed Agron, which is what I have. So now that he's taken two uh, KOs on his side in two turns, uh, I figure he's definitely just going to make a safe play here, so I'm just going to go right into Dose to uh, eat up this close combat, which is indeed what he goes for. And looks like based on that damage, it's not going to be any kind of boosting item. So I'm just going to assume for the moment it is going to be Sashed, as we have already seen Stealth Rock. And, uh, you know, he's got a little bit of Stealth Rock damage in there, so Sash is broken, which is awesome. Uh, I want to get hit points back up on Dose, though. Uh, I don't know. He could still potentially be something like, you know, Overheat Mixed, which uh, this is a very physically invested Zapdos, not specially. So uh, I want to make sure we can get back hit points up and go from there. I definitely don't want, want to, like, hit him, put him in blaze range, etc. So, uh, he just sets up rocks again as we get back up to full HP. And this time, however, I, you know, I still want to get him spun away, of course. But this time, at least, I have mine up as well. Uh, and, you know, generally when one side has rocks up and the other one doesn't, that's typically when a match can start to tip. So, uh, at least this time, I do have mine up. Uh, he still has a lower defensive from close combat. So, I think Volt Switch, even with the lower defenses, still won't kill him. Uh, albeit I'm hoping it'll put him in range to die of Stealth Rock uh, on entry. We'll have to see. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and Volt Switch here, as um, at this point, you know, Magneton's gone, so he has nothing left to come in and soak up uh, T-Wave, apart from, I guess, the already paralyzed Mega Pinsir. Air Canada does come back in, and uh, we're going to Volt Switch out of there and get back into Bliss, and uh, hopefully start T-Wave and stuff. So, uh, when I see, however, when I see Bliss's HP, it's still pretty good. And uh, then when I click to drop it in, I realize, oh crap, I'm going to take Stealth Rock. So it gets down a little bit dicier than I would have liked, but thankfully I'm still above uh, the 114 mark. Uh, but at that point, it's like 114 to 129. That's not, that's feasible damage variation, so I'm hoping Bliss is going to live that. I'm pretty sure it will, but it's just a little bit closer than I would have liked. So uh, that's going to end up making me click uh, Soft World right here. Because, you know, again, the theme of this match is I can't time a T-Wave to save my life. Um, once again, I'm at about half HP, so in case he switches or whatever, um, you know, like potentially into Mega Pinsir, I guess, um, you know, I don't want to waste a... don't want to waste the T-Wave, and I'm just going to go ahead and get boiled back up, and because uh, that'll put Blissey at full HP, and at this point, I believe I'm above a crit. A crit should do around about, like, 160. Uh, so even if he gets a crit, Psyshock at this point will still be all right. Um, but again, I want to get hit points back, so uh, that's what I've clicked. And uh, you can guess what that means. If I've clicked Soft Boiled, that means this was probably a turn to click T Wave. And uh, indeed, he does go into Tornado's T. So uh, we do get back up to full HP, which is all well and good. 
And uh, now I'm going to decide to click T-Wave and try to get this thing paralyzed if we could. Um, because now we have Stealth Rook up A, and because I'm now at full HP, uh, which is was neither of which were the case the first time we had this matchup uh, early on in the game. Uh, I feel more okay with leaving Bliss in. So he's actually going to taunt, and uh, of course that means he's going to avoid T-Wave. So once again, we missed time T-Wave for about the fourth or fifth time this match. <sighs> oh well. We got, we got the one on Mega Pinsir, which was arguably the most important one. So I'm going to switch out here, get back into Dose, who is going to take uh, damage on entry. And uh, it's going to take a Hurricane and takes it, takes it okay. Um, but I'm at about half HP, and here I want to roost because I don't want to like volt switch out and then have to come in and be at like under a third HP. I'm not going to be very happy about that. Uh, but at the same time, I kind of don't want him to taunt and you know kind of get that off. Uh, you know, if I can get a free quote unquote move on him, that would be great. So uh, I think what I'm ultimately going to do here is just go ahead and click discharge. You know, it'll do mad damage. I don't think it'll kill him. Uh, because, uh, you know, I'm not especially invested, but, uh, you know, I might get a Paralyze, which it hasn't done so far. Here comes a dis or actually got it on Amoongus, and, uh, we also get one on Infernape, which that is a big Paralysis right there. Uh, as I put him in Blaze range, if he's got a Fire move, I'm gonna go ahead and get some hit points back really quick. And, uh, he actually packs Endeavor, which uh, I think he packed last week, uh, but since I did get that para uh, get that Paralyze, uh, like I did, I know I'm gonna be fine. Just let me just click, keep, uh, keep clicking. Roost, 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 roost. He can knock me down to 45 HP uh, as much as he wants, but I still have a decent number of roosts left, and I'm pretty confident uh, that he is eventually gonna get either you know full parrot and let me get a free one off, or uh, he's gonna, just gonna have to switch out. So uh, here we go. He's gonna endeavor again, but uh, you can see I'm gonna make decisions pretty quick. I'm just gonna roost until I get a free one because that's how we do. And uh, thankfully, Ghost Head happens pretty early on, and I'm you know sitting at decent HP right now. And uh, yeah, I may as well just go ahead and finish the thing off because I want Dose in well with the discharge because I want Dose in against whatever he wants to sit, uh, send in. Uh, Bliss is still sitting at full HP, so Bliss is going to be capable of taking on Latias. So I see no need to uh, volt switch it in uh, like that. Uh, as you can see, the timer's ticking down uh, quite a bit right now, and I have a big Pokemon lead, so. The thought does enter my mind, like, if we can just play defense, we probably have it that way. But, of course, winning that way is really lame, so, we you know, we don't want to win that way. But, uh, as we do approach the 75% of the way done through the battle, I still got all six guys, and that's pretty cool. So, think about what he wants to drop in here. And I forget if he actually times out at any one of these turns. Uh, I guess you can go watch his side if you haven't already, uh, to see that. But he's gonna drop in, uh, this bird. And... I'm kind of really okay with that, uh, to be perfectly honest. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe this was a t turn where he timed out, but I definitely expected Latias to come in, uh, even though we kind of know what, what ended up happening there, but I, you know, it might have forced some weird doubles and whatnot. Uh, I believe what I do here is I go ahead and roost, because I'll take a little bit of damage and then be back up to full. And, uh, you know, this, you know, also la because last time I didn't click roost fearing taunt, so this time I decided to do so. Um, so in the end, I get hit points back, and he ends up dropping in this thing, and we're kind of in the same situation as if he had dropped this thing in on the free drop, except I got back the rest of my hit points. So, so yeah, at this point, I probably should get a little bit more aggressive and drop in Agron to take Psy Shocks, which I can only imagine what is what he's going to go for, but uh, I'm just going to go and drop in Bliss, see what he wants to do, and he goes Healing Wish, so I know that's going to end up being... Uh, going into Mega Pinsir, giving it second life. Uh, however, because of the way Healing Wish works, he gets back up to full. He does clear his status, but he does still take 50% on entry from Stealth Rock. You know, that's the price you pay for getting in and getting the HP if you were going to die from Stealth Rock. So, uh, anyway, I, uh, what, what should we do here? Um, I think I just end up to, at this point, uh, I've still got my ace in the hole with Whimsicott. So at this point... I think I got it in the bag as long as Mega Pinsir doesn't get a substitute up or any you know shenanigans like that. So I believe what I do here is I just go ahead and click Seismic Toss um, just so that I will definitely break a sub. And then you know if that is what he goes for, then whatever. As long as he's not behind a sub, I'll be okay. Uh, however, I really do not know why he did this. He just immediately switched into this thing. Um, I really don't know why. Um, but uh, he did, and I got an S-Toss off on it, so cool. Uh, here, again, um, I didn't want to get taunted. Uh, I was kind of expecting him to taunt, and instead, uh, 
yeah, we just got him really low with that. And at that point, I'm going to feel pretty good that most anything, even after it gets a regenerator boost, it'll be, you know, a little bit over a third. Should be able to take it out. And uh, I got 63 HP left, so I'm just going to salute Medi. She did great this game. And uh, I'm just going to, I believe, click S-Toss and uh, really expect to die to another superpower. Maybe I'll bring in Agron since he'll have minus two attack. And uh, maybe I can try to do some stuff with that. But uh, he actually goes Hurricane and Bliss proceeds to live it. So, whoops. <laughs> Lives it with 2 HP, which is very little for a Bliss, um, but lives it nonetheless. And, um, yeah, I, I can only assume he didn't just didn't want the, uh, at that point, probably even knockoff would have killed, despite me not having an item. So uh, I could sacrifice Bliss, uh, but instead I decide, you know what, I, if I, I can just sacrifice somebody and then go into Starmie. I decide, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and go into, go into Zapdos anyway. Bliss, he just did something cool, so I'm going to try to let it live. Uh, it was a little bit risky because if he got a Swords Dance up and uh, potentially got a couple crits with uh, Quick Attack, I might have actually been counter swept depending on uh, what the rest of his moves were. I think he said he did not have close combat, so I think Agron would have been okay, uh, obviously, to take on the Stab Flying. And then uh, he Stone Edges here, which I don't know why, but he ends up to miss it anyway. So, yeah. So, no 5 0. I was expecting it to just be a 5 0. Uh, with, with Dose going down here, and then Starmie comes in for the last KO. But nah, Fate decides that nah, Cooper, you can have the 6 0 again off a of missed Stone Edge. So I'm pretty sure that even Knockoff would have killed there. I don't know if that means he didn't have Return or what. But uh, yeah, I don't see why he went for Stone Edge. There were several, uh, whatever. Maybe that's just from my perspective, but I'm uh, definitely looking forward to seeing his. But uh, yeah, so that will be a 6 0 uh, of the Winnipeg Aqua Jets. So GBA statisticians, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the first multi 6 season that any team has had. So we got uh, the first three weeks, we got two 6 0s and a 1-0 loss. So I will definitely take that, um, especially against the battler as skilled as Hank. That was uh, definitely a good game, although the score was very lopsided and it might not appear as such. So... Uh, I think that also might be Hank's first loss in a league format, although he'll be the first to tell you that the competition level of the PBL was not quite uh, what it is in the GBA. And, uh, you know, he feels like he's been overestimated. So, I don't know. Maybe that's just him being awesome and modest. So, anyway, it is a 6 0 nonetheless and keeps us uh, still in the front of the pack in the Diamond Division. So, let's go ahead and look at the Pokemon of the game. Uh, which, if you noticed, <laughs> we did it again, guys. Women's Cat and Zardex got brought, and they didn't hit the field. So that seems to be a pretty winning MO for us right now. But uh, uh, we could give it to, yeah, that monstrosity. But uh, I guess I'll go ahead and key in on giving it to Blissey specifically, just because Stealth Rock was so big and just limiting the usability of Mega Pinsir and Tornadus T. Uh, because his Lydias was indeed scarfed, uh, that meant it didn't have any form of recovery, so every time I have to come in and just run into the wall that is Bliss, and it just loses an eighth every time it comes in like that. So, uh, And of course, breaking Ape Sash. I guess breaking Ape Sash wasn't that big a deal because of the way things went down, but you know it could have potentially been a big deal. Um, and definitely the EV spread that we went with with the max. I always run max defense, but um, you know running max HP uh, as well. As you saw, we lived the hurricane from Tornado C with two HP, which is a very small amount compared to Blissey's max. So, uh, and then of course we had a uh, you know took on Latias just fine. Did exactly what it needed to do. I was kind of glad I didn't have to deal with like a calm mind recovery Latias like I did against Tom. Uh, in Season 2. Uh, you know, I, I do think Scarf was probably the correct set because otherwise Charizard becomes a very huge threat to his team. And uh, ultimately, I was just so glad not to see Excadrill. That made this game so much easier. So, so much easier. Uh, pretty much just got to go between Blissey and Zapdos for just about the entire game. Uh, and then Agron coming in there to bust the seam. Uh, in Hank's team there towards the middle picking up two KOs and then uh, saying alright peace out and uh, Starmie coming in for the early game rapid spin to keep rocks off the field and beyond that it was just the, the uh, yeah the Blisto show it is a perverse vile diabolical structure next week uh, next week this is probably one that a lot of you have circled on your calendars before the season started 
Uh, yeah, this is the this is the showdown for Diamond Division domination between myself and John. Um, you know, we're bo we're now sitting at uh, one and two in the division respectively. I don't think we played since GBA season two when we had that really weird game where there was a miscommunication and we ended up playing it late and it ended up disconnecting. We ended up playing it on showdown. I brought weird stuff like a uh, spec Suicune with Toxic. <laughs> Um, and you know, we kind of really bonded over that game and uh, in the off seasons and seasons since we've gotten to be pretty good friends so that's been pretty cool but uh, now it's finally time for us to play again and uh, renew this rivalry so uh, yeah looking at the records here uh, we are 2-1 two, two and one, uh, sitting at plus 11 courtesy of two six O's and a 1-0 loss and I said last week, John's coming back from college, away from the noisy roommates and whatnot, and I think he's about to kick it into high gear. That's pretty much what happened against the Long Island Reggie Rockies as I put up a big 5-0 on Nips this week. Got back into plus differential, got that first win, and uh, because Crimson lost uh, to Mulvone of the Cincinnati Loud Reds, um, which moves him to 3-0, which puts him first in the Ruby division, uh, overtaking Hank. Um, that moves Crimson back to third and John up to second. So that's how the division's shaken out. We ended up, uh, Diamond Division ends up going two and one uh, against the Ruby Division. And uh, even though Hank moves to second in his division, I'm still pretty sure that he's, he's going to make the playoffs. Um, <laughs> I have every bit of confidence in that. And, uh, you know, if we do end up playing him again, then that means that we made the finals. So I would readily welcome that. Um, but you know, I'll, I guess I'll say once again, good game, Hank. Uh, I definitely wish him the best of luck uh, going far the rest of the way because I'm not playing him again, and I'm not competing with him for playoff spots. So I can say that. So there you go. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, there is free agency, however, that's going to be starting this week. Uh, I know John did not put in for any free agents. Uh, you know, taking the smart approach of waiting to see what everyone else maybe drops and then take up one of those. Uh, there is one poke that I did put in for, and uh, it might be kind of surprising to see who we dropped, but uh, I kind of doubt we're going to get it. I don't know right now because uh, we didn't actually get the free agents released at midnight when I'm recording this. So uh, we'll see. Uh, it's not really a draft oversight or anything. It's just something that looking at what the other two teams that were in my division, who I didn't know were going to be in my division, uh, looking at what they have, uh, it would be would have been nice to have this thing instead of one other thing I have. Um, so again, like not a draft mistake. It's just now that I see what the divisions are and I see what their whole rosters are, um, it's something that would have been more beneficial than taking what I took. So, but yeah, uh, if I did get that thing somehow, uh, I'll be shocked if it's uh, if it actually falls to me since I have a pretty high order in the or a pretty low pick in the free agent pool since it goes in reverse order of standings. Um, if somehow it falls to me, I'll put a video up on t tonight, Sunday night, I guess. But uh, otherwise, we'll, uh, we won't. And I'll also stealthily stalk the free agent pool and see uh, see if we want to make any changes. But uh, you know, I'm pretty satisfied with the roster we got, so as is. And we, we're stuck with Venomoth because it's a BL and we can't change around BLs, so oh well. Um, but anyway, that pretty much does it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, one more thing, there will be a, what's it called, a vine? Yeah, there will be a vine of the, uh, yeah, you, you guys know the spot I'm talking about in this video. Uh, so if you guys want to watch that on loop, I know I personally do. Uh, I'll put that in a comment or in the description or something. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy that. And I'll see you guys next week for uh, another very important matchup again. Later days.